started this walkthrough of adding flow actions to your custom skills created with analysis skill kit. Now, for those new to the concept of a flow action, what these essentially are are building blocks found within Workflow Studio that encapsulate some specific steps or tasks that are required for a flow to function. You can kind of think of them as individual Lego bricks that you can then combine to essentially run an entire workflow. We really highly recommend using them in a lot of scenarios just because they are reusable in both flows and conveniently within custom skills and analysis skill kit. So it's good practice to use those to try and essentially make your processes a little bit more modular in nature. Now, with that said, what we'll be doing today is actually using a flow action to um, get some get an output of a list of user tasks. Now, the context for that is our custom skill, as you can see on the screen here, is one that is going to be take that list of tasks that we output from that flow action and determine how long it will take for that user to actually complete them. Now, this is entirely unscientific, but what you can see within the prompt, we have given the um, LLM a role, and then we have missing braces where you provide that list of tasks. Now the input for this custom skill is a particular user from that sys user table, and this will be important in a second. Because if we actually go, so the flow action in this example, just to reiterate, is one called fetch user tasks, where we pass in that user's sys ID. And then we have a script here that takes in that user ID that we pass in, and we actually filter within that task table for all tasks assigned to that particular user. Any tasks that we find are then added to this text variable that contains both the sys ID, the number, and then the description of the task, which we then add to the outputs. Now we can see down here that we've labeled the outputs. And then one step that I always forget is at the bottom here, we've got the outputs on the left. We also need to label the actual outputs so then we know what to expect and whatever we put within this variable will actually be exposed with an analysis skill kit. If you want to have multiple outputs, you can do so through clicking this and just adding as many as you want, and you can assign various variables to that. So the example user we'll be using today is that of David Liu, who, as you can see, has a ton of tasks assigned to him. So if we test that, our flow action, we can open this up and we can see the response that contains all these tasks that were assigned to him. And this is going to be the input into our prompt to help us determine how much more work they have left. So returning to the skill, we go to the tool editor and add in a tool node to this diagram. And we add in the type of tool act, flow action. And you call it get tasks for user. Now, if we search for, actually one thing to note, if we go back, do always make sure that your flow action was published, otherwise it won't appear in that resource list as you just saw then. So let's return. And if we click on it, you should see our flow action appear there. You can click continue. And then again, if you remember that we've detected that the input needs to be a user's sys ID, we can do that through clicking the skill input picker. And then from our user that we've added, we want to pass in the sys ID. You then click continue. You have the option to truncate any of these outputs. If you think they're going to be too long and consume too many of your tokens, you can do so. However, today we're not too worried about that. So click continue. Here is where you can dictate if you always want to run the tool or not. Um, this is especially helpful if 
perhaps your flow action is making an API call and you want to not make too many requests in a single day, um, you can add that logic in here and just say like if XYZ happens, return false, if not, return true. And what happens is if this particular script returns false, this tool won't actually run. But for today, we're not too worried about that. So we always want it to run. And then after clicking add tool, you will see that your diagram has been updated with your flow action. So let's return to the prompt editor and add a reference to the output of that um, particular flow action. And just make sure that you return the output variable that you defined, which in our case is tasks. We then save the prompt and run the test on David Liu. And if we scroll down, so the first thing that we can look at is both the tool tab where we see what was passed in to our uh, flow action, which was that user sysid. We see what the response was from the flow action, which is a ton of tasks. We then can look at the ground of prompt to see exactly what was sent to the LLM, which is both the combination of our prompt alongside the results from our flow action, which those contained within those curly braces, which you can see here. Then lastly, if you click on response, you can move back to the text view we can see the estimated time it will take for David Liu to complete his tasks based upon that task list. So that was a brief walkthrough of how to use flow actions within your custom skills. Have a good day.